Hi, I'm Stephen Hand from Archery Supplies. Today we're going to look at timing the, the basin. So I did the basin review, the Elite Basin review, and you probably saw the time was a little bit out on the top. So we actually set the, the limb stops to be the same. The top was a little bit behind and it was only a fraction, but it, like moving it from there to there, it was just a little bit out, but that last bit of timing was an issue. So I went to put the bow in a bow press and the problem is that these get in the way. So you gotta take these off when you want to adjust the cables. So I've got to take both these off when I want to adjust the cables. And then I basically put them back on, twist up the cables. So this is quite a process. So the first thing I did was I'll, I thought, well, I'll take this one off. But that's a problem because I can't get back to it. So you've got to actually take them off here. So use these two screws and take them off. So we're going to take this off and then put in the bro press, twist it up. I'm going to show you doing that and then redo it. Okay, so I've taken both the stops off and I'm ready to put in the bow press. Okay, so when you press the bow, you want to put as little pressure as possible on these limbs. So I'm just going to, there's enough pressure here to hold the bow and the bow press. Just a little bit more. You can see this one starts to become a little bit loose. Just, that's enough. You can see there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take that off. Like that. Now I can access the cam. So I haven't put too much pressure on the limbs. And I can now access the cams to twist the thing. Now the top, the top cam is slow. So if I, what I do is I pull on the cables to see which way it moves the cam. So moving the top cable here moves this one back. I want to move. Sometimes you get it wrong when you do it. I want to move this one back. So I want to make this one a little bit shorter. So I don't do it at this end with the yokes are, I do it at the other end. So we're going to do two twists, one, two, and put it back on. And then I simply put this string back on. Now this is ready for me to test. Now in a shop situation, you generally don't want to be doing this in front of a customer because like on Saturday, we had so many customers in the shop, you don't want to be doing this. So it's really nice when it's all set up at the factory. Now, these are timing marks here. So you'll see now where the string goes through, it's actually not timed. Originally at the factory, these were timed. So these actually became, they were spot on from the factory, but at full draw, they're a little bit out. Now, someone in the comments when I did the review said, well, obviously you've got the um, cams not lined up. So this is on one and a half here, and it should be on one and a half here. Yep, one and a half there. So it's on the same position. You'll see it's on number three there, number three here, one, two, three. So you can see I've got it on the right position. I've actually shortened it down half an inch since last time. So now I put it on the drawboard. Now I haven't put the limb stops on. Now what we're going to do is, as I draw this back, I'm actually going to test the cam timing as I draw it back to see when it's in time. Now when I'm testing this, generally when you do the cam timing, if the strings, if the D-loop's not in the centre of the string, I'm guessing this one's not, um, the cams will be at different timing at different points, if that makes sense, because the distance from there to there is different to the distance from the bottom cam to the D-loop. So it'll be at a different point. So if you've got a bow where this is a dead certain string, the cams will always be in sync. So I'm guessing with this bow, I'd have to measure it, I'm guessing the centre is the grip. So I don't know if that's correct or not, but that's what I'm guessing. So let's just have a look through the draw cycle. So first point I look at, see these little, there's holes here on the wheels, I'm hoping you can see those. So I first off check, so the top one goes straight through the middle and the bottom one's straight through the middle right now. So you can see at the start, before this bow was drawn back, they weren't in time. But now halfway through the draw cycle, or like 10 inches through, they're actually aligned. So the question is, is it going to be aligned at full draw?
Now, as you draw back the bow, there's different marks. You can see here, there's another one here on the cam. Now it's out a little bit at the bottom. So it was fine to start with, and now it's just a fraction out. So we're just going to keep doing this. It's very hard on the Elite because it's a on the Elite Basin to see the draw stop because the module is so short with it, which hits the string stop. So it's very hard for me to see when I put my head around the cable here whether they're touching or not touching. So bottom one's touching now. And the top one's actually miles off. So bottom one's touching and bottom so when I look at the marks so you can see the top one is one two and a half in the bottom one is one two three four in but if I go back to there so this one's on two this one's on three so you're looking through the yoke here two so this one's on one this one's on two So this one now, the bottom is advanced. The bottom one's advanced, this one's trailing behind. So we're going to try it again. So we're going to experiment with pulling these links to I get this exactly the same at full draw. So I've got to a stage where I think I've done seven twists taken out of the top cable. Now you can see here where the yoke's touching, it's one, two, three, four, five. And on the bottom it's one, two, three, four, five. So at this stage it's really, really close to being perfect. It's not quite touching here. And it's actually touching the bottom. So I'm actually going to take another half turn off. So far I suppose I've spent about 20 minutes getting this cam timing right. And I just do like two turns. So it was seven turns. I've increased the size of the top cable. So we're going to do another two turns and we're going to try again, but it's getting really, really close. Okay, so <laughs> I'm still going. So that was two turns on the twist and it's now gone the opposite way. So it's really, really sensitive on the cam cable timing. So we're talking half a twist on the cables will move this one side or the other. So all up, it's going to be eight turns out. And I don't know if it's going to be perfect, but we're going to put it in now. But it's like, oh. So anyway. Okay, so half a twist. I fitted the draw stops because that's all I can do, right? So half a twist, that's all I've got. Now there's a product from Boma which you can stick in your cables like a little bit of plastic to change your cable length. And this is what it's for. Now as an alternative to using little plastic things to fit in your cables to change your cable length, you can just put D-loop in there, but I'm like, is that a... Like I saw Dan McCarthy do it, and I'm like, well, you can put... Like, do I really want to put bits of D-loop in my cables to change the timing on your cables? I don't know. I don't, but that's what they've got. So let's just sort of see how this works now. So I've fitted the stops, so we're going to see if the stops hit. And I've moved the stops back, so they this should give me maximum value. Again, I still look at this, so this is on number one. Number one down the bottom. So it's like, it's good. Like, at this point in time, it's good. So three, three. My problem is I can't see where this thing is, whether it's hitting. It's a, like it's a little bit away still, so we'll go to number five. Five, you can see it like it rocks over to five. So five, it's still not hitting. So five, one, two, three, four and a half at the bottom. So and that's 
that's it. So let's go and have a shot and see how, the, how it feels now to shoot. Okay, so hopefully the bow's timed, fingers crossed, um, and we're going to see how the draw cycle is now um, and see if there's less shock when I shoot this bow. Um, So it starts off exactly the same. It's got a bit of give in the draw cycle to start with. It's getting... So, with the Envision it kind of builds into a valley. So it sort of slowly builds down and it's rock solid at the end. This, the valley's shorter and it's... You're really not... You're really not getting a valley. It's... I mean, there's a valley there, like, this is your peak, 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 peak. It's probably starting to drop, maybe. Valley there, and then it's like a wall there. So, you can feel it being in time now. So, I'm going to take the shot. It still feels to me, this bow, Axel Axel, is the same as the Envision. But it feels shorter for some reason. Like, the string angle, it feels harder. I don't know why. The draw cycle doesn't feel as good. It, the grip doesn't feel as good. There's still a fair bit of shot in the hand. It's definitely better. It's definitely better. The timing's definitely better. Um, but there's still a fair bit of vibration you feel um, in the shot afterwards you see that I don't know if you can see in the video but the bow sort of jumps forward in my hand with the envision it just sits there but it's definitely better um, so with that what we're, we're going to do is we're going to shoot at 18 meters and we'll see if I can hit the middle this time so I'm back at 18 meters um, I've sighted the bow in I don't know how successful I sighted it in um, now I'm going to say that I've shortened the draw length and shortening the draw length definitely decreased the poundage. I think it made the bow less twitchy. Um, it definitely reduced the speed of this bow because before the arrows were like pounding into this target I was getting incredible speed with the basin. It's definitely slowed this bow right back to normal. So I think this bow is going to be a lot, a lot easier at the shorter draw lengths. So I think it's going to be a lot more forgiving at the shorter draw lengths. I think at the longer draw lengths, this bow, this bow's harder. And I'm going to say, it feels like a shorter bow to me to shoot. It, I don't feel as comfortable with it. Um, like the Envision, like, beautiful. Love the bow. The, you know, and it's 31 inches and it feels great to shoot. I feel like I can shoot target archery with it all day long. This, I feel hand shock. The bow feels like it kicks up on me. Um, it doesn't, it's like for an extra double the price, $800, buy the Envision every day over this bow. Um, it's not even a question in my mind. Like normally I've got, uh, like, you know, you probably know if you watch my videos, I'm very price sensitive on stuff. I'm like, look, it's a little bit cheaper. Look, buy the Envision. It's a good bow. It's... I'm, yeah, let's see how well I shoot. That scared me. Um, it scared me because I thought the bow was going to drop out of my hand oh, when I shot. I didn't expect it to go off when it went off because I'm shooting a back tension release. And I, I think the shot was probably okay. I can't see the arrow, so I never know how the arrows are till I get up there at the target. But it was aimed in the middle, it was a good shot. But I felt a bit of shock with the shot after I shot it. It's. Look, it's a lighter bow, and I'm feeling. 
that when I shoot it, I'm feeling that when I shoot it, I'm feeling the vibration through the handle when I shoot it. The Envision, uh, going back to the Envision every time, the Envision I felt nothing. It feels no shock at all. It's just dead in the hand. It's And, and part of it, when I'm shooting, if I execute a good shot, I expect my arrow to go in the middle. I expect it to hit to Robin Hood the arrow, even if I'm shooting recurve. So I was sitting there shooting recurve last night. If I execute a good shot, I expect it to bang the other arrow. I expect it to blow knocks off. I expect a really good shot. I, I don't know if it's a draw cycle with the bow. Um, I feel like the draw length is right for me. Um, maybe I want it to be a little bit shorter. Like the limb stops are good. So it's a solid draw stop when I get back here. And you know, they might be all crunching each other down at the hair of the target. I don't know. What it feels to me when I take the shot, that arrow was Sight pin was dead in the middle of the target when I took that shot. It was a nice shot. My hand, front hand was relaxed. I felt like my form was good. I felt like it was a perfect shot. Like that time they both kind of jarred out for me. Now when I've, when I've reviewed Elite video bows before in the reviews, I've really liked the Elite grip. It's been a thing for me, I've really liked it, it's been one of my favourite grips of all the bow manufacturers. For some reason I'm not gelling with this grip, I don't know why, I'm just not feeling that level of confidence with it. It's not that, so that one's pushing up. It may be better if you shoot a stabilizer with, with the basin. But I'm just not feeling the shot, if that makes any sense. Normally it's like you shoot the shot, it's clean and it breaks away and it feels good. It's a good experience. It, it makes me feel good when I shoot a good shot. It, when I shoot a gun, it explodes in on me and I'm like, oh, that wasn't real much fun. When I shoot a bow, it breaks away. It's a really nice, relaxing shot. The arrow hits the other arrow. I feel good about it. I'm not feeling that with this bow. I'm just going to shoot one more. Um, so again, like it's good it's got poundage adjustment, it's good it's got draw length adjustment. I think this bow is going to be a different bow for a shorter draw length. Um, I really want to go down there and see how those are. Though, all those shots felt really good. I, all the shots felt good. So let's go down there and see what they're, they're like. Well, I did not expect that. I had no concept. I was expecting this huge group. Like I shot the first time I shot this boat. Um, and this is like pretty good. Like, you know, I, my hands around the whole lot except for this one here, which is off to the side. It's a good group, right? So clearly it's really, really important to get your draw length correct. So I've done a few videos before where I've had my draw length incorrect and it definitely has an impact on my shooting ability. So I think the cams being out timed on the first video had a huge impact because I've got, got a group up here and I had some group down here. So I was getting different draw length, I was getting different speeds through. So it was not ideal. This is clearly better. Now I'm getting a bit of a spread left to right. So the height's pretty good. And that's because I've got limb stops on this bow. So it's giving me the same amount of speed every time. 
but I'm getting a little bit of left to right and that's I'm not comfortable with the grip now if you saw the review I did on the ATFX when I shot that it's a recurve bow I shot it pretty bad the first time I shot it and I've been shooting it now for about a week since I did that review look I'm still not getting the same results that I was out of my old riser like all my arrows are in the gold at 18 meters so it's not a bad score like it would be a pretty decent score but it's not the same level of confidence I've, I've got in the same level of feedback I get from my old riser and I suppose with the basin I'm feeling the same I'm feeling that I don't have like these arrows are a good group I just didn't have the confidence I'm not feeling it in the shot as soon as I shot the Elite Envision it was like the bow just sat there in my hand after the shot it just sat there like a statue the shot went in the middle it felt great it was just a really good experience of shooting the bow so my summary the bow is light which is good for a person who wants a light bow it's very adjustable the tuning was a pain in the backside like shops are going to go nuts for the tuning like having to tune in in front of customers if you're going to line up we would have had people three deep on saturday waiting to be served in the shop and you're not want to go to, you don't want to spend an hour setting up a bow setting up the draw length and then having a time a bow on top of that so for me that's a major issue um for, for probably the shops um, whether elite fixes that in the in the timing or not but let's say the bow was timed out of the factory and it was how it was um, look it's not a bad like it's a nicely finished product um, it's elite which is good but I'm still gonna for me I'm still gonna buy an envision every day of the week no question the only person who I could recommend this for over an Envision, obviously a person who doesn't want to spend $1,600, but the person who's going to buy this is a person who can't handle the physical mass weight of an Envision bow. They need a bow that's lighter. So it's going to be like a, a teenager, maybe a lady who doesn't who can't handle the weight of an Envision. Um, that's where this bow is sort of going to come in. Now what I'd say is I would experiment with the let offs here. So I set this to be maximum let off. I would experiment with that. I have a lot of success experimenting with my draw length and the let off of the bow to get the shot to feel nice, to get the bow to feel nice. Um, I'm feeling like this draw length is pretty good for me and I would, if I was to shoot this again, I would actually make the uh, let off a little bit less so I got more feedback. I would work on the balancing of this bow so it um, is deader in the hand. I would be looking at things to absorb shock um, so I'm getting a nice feel for the bow. So maybe stabilizers will absorb that but I'm definitely looking to, to for this bow to be steady in the hand after the shot so I can get a whole follow through. It's not going to affect your accuracy, it's just going to affect your overall feel of the shot. And it's just going to build your confidence in the in the bow and in your shot process. Um, it's all about confidence and feeling good. So that grip's pretty good. So I don't know. I think probably Elite's going to hate me still, but no Christmas cards or Christmas presents from Elite. I'm just going to say like like doing reviews puts you at huge risk for manufacturers. You know, I've been told by. A manufacturer not to well I can I think I can do a review if I do positive reviews um, so I'm like look I don't know how the reviews are going to turn out when I start them I you know I do I pull the product out the box and I shoot it it's like meant to be a user experience it's not meant to be a TV ad if you want to do a TV ad there's another channel which does TV ads um, and I'm not having a go at that shop. I understand why they do that, they keep people on board, but this is about the experience for, for myself when I pull a product out the box, how it is, how I find the bow, do I want to sell the bow, do I, you know, what are the prob what are the problems I'm going to find with the product. For the manufacturers, if they take that and they go, well I can build a better product next time or maybe it will fix this and maybe we'll fix this time and make sure it's fixed next time, 
it's a huge plus because we get a better product out. If you do a video and go, well, I'm not going to mention the boat was out of time, manufacturer doesn't change everything and all the shops just hate the product and it's a major problem. Um, for everyone, the product just doesn't sell and no one ever mentions why it doesn't sell. So, I think on that, um, I'll leave it. Enjoy your archery. Um, now, Elite's also released a bow called a Terrain. So, they released two new bows. Well, they produced three new bows this year. The Envision, which is awesome, if I haven't said that enough. Um, the Basin, which, oh, my God, whatever. Um, that's this one. Um, like, it's not bad, but it's like... Mm, um, they've got the terrain as well. The terrain is a hundred dollars more expensive than this. It's a hybrid cam system, which is a bit unique. I don't know why Elite have gone for a hybrid cam system. That's the bow we're going to review next. And I got lots of questions about the Envision and the Remedy, which one would be better for Target and how it feels. Am I better to go for an Envision over the Cure? Look, I don't. Your best bet is to go and shoot these things and see how you find it. I know literally all my staff have shot the Envision now because I was saying how good this bow was and they're like, this bow is amazing. And I'm like, cool, you all have the same view as I do. Excellent. Um, so, yeah, go and try stuff. Um, you can take my, this is the way I've, I've, I feel a bow is. Um, but go and try stuff out. It's the fun of it. Um, and you can always sell stuff if you don't like it at the end of the day. Um, but that was really, really twitchy, the cables on this boat. And I think it's going to be more twitchy the long draw length. I think at the short draw lengths, because I'm familiar with the Ember, really familiar with the Ember. And on the Ember, I don't think I've ever had to touch any of the cables before. So, but they've always been set at the shorter draw lengths. So, actually, in fact, saying that once I did have an Ember really badly out of time. And I didn't realise it. And so there you go. I did have one really out of time. So, yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.